Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft, thank you for watching. So today is World Card Making Day, so I thought I'd do this little bonus video because I don't tend to upload on a Saturday, but I had to mark the occasion and I thought I'd make a really nice fun fold card. So it's a slightly different size than normal. This is, ends up being a seven by six, so I did use the envelope punch board to make the envelope, okay? So that's how it will be, and then you open it up and you've got best wishes there. And I'm calling it a pop out Z fold or a center panel Z fold card because basically I've just popped out the center and that's it. It's really, really straightforward. Yeah, it just, I think, has a really, really nice profile. So it stands up like this. So I have it so that you can, I've kind of pull it out a little bit just so you can see the best wishes. You can have it completely kind of square on like that and that looks really nice as well because that flower sits perfectly in the center of the card like that. But if you kind of just go out like that, you get to see the, the sentiment. You could have a sentiment coming out of here and have lots of more flowers down there. You can obviously decorate this entirely how you like. You have lots of room on the back. I do need to just put my panel there. I'm going to do it on this card, but I didn't do it on this one here. So I do need to finish that off. Oh, try not to squash your, your little flowers there. But yeah, it's really, really sweet. So let me show you how to make this pretty quick card as well. Okay, so for the small flowers, I have used the Bright Rosa Flower Border dies and then for the main flower in the centre I've used this one. I've used it on about three or four cards now. Beautiful. The centre pop out card has been so popular. So many of you make that one and I used that for this and it for that one. It looked beautiful. You've got all the decoration there. And I did say these also could be used for snowflakes if you layer them up and use the smaller ones here and stuff. So yeah you can certainly use your dies in other ways. So the paper pad I'm using is the Winter Rose by First Edition. And the great thing about this is there are, I'd say maybe half the papers do have a Christmas image on them, but the rest are just a pattern or this floral, which I used on that card. So you can use them all year round. So it's a beautiful paper pad. As always, they always do the textured card stocks. And you've got, look at the pheasant one, can't wait to use that. But then at the back, you have all your double-sided, which are great for your backgrounds. So I've already pulled my papers out, but that's the one I'm using. And then for that Best Wishes Vertical Sentiment, I've got this one here, which is the Floral Friends, and it's just the Best Wishes there, which I've already gone ahead and stamped. So I've done all of that off camera, because again, that's pretty self-explanatory, you'll know how to do that. So with the dies, to get the flower, you cut the very large one, so the one with this piece here, you just cut that off. It gives you little markers to follow. Then I used basically all of those. Then I cut this, this frame here to do the background. And then this one here is your detail, which you cut with that. And then these are all of these pieces here and here, and then the circles in the center. And you get this big flower. And they're the smaller ones from the other ones. You just layer them all up. So you are going to need do the mats and layers in a moment because yeah once once we do this bit it's together in minutes really so this is a piece of 10 by 7 and along the 10 inch side you want to score at two and a half five and seven and a half okay then along the seven inch side okay so I'm going to line it up first of all at two and a half now I have scored these because if you're cutting if you score first and then cut, it actually makes it a bit easier to cut through the thicker cardstock because you've squashed the card. But all you really want to be doing here is at two and a half, start from that score line and just draw a pencil line down to the last score line. Okay, that's at the two and a half marker. Then I'm going to slide my ruler along to four and a half. And again, do a pencil mark from that first score line down to the third or score it, or put it in your trimmer and cut straight away. But I like to show it this way because, you know, it doesn't matter if you don't have a trimmer, you can still do it. So you can see my two pencil lines there, okay, right through the middle. We're now going to cut down through those. So I've just got a metal ruler and my knife. I'm just going to line up that there very carefully. And then you're just going to cut. All the way down. Again, you're just cutting between the first score line and down to the last one, so you'll have this score line in the middle there. And again, I'm going to cut that one there. Okay, so now you should have that there. I'm just going to go over and rub out the pencil. Okay, and then what you want to do is this, so there's your card, it's going to be like this. This first score line you want to fold so it's a mountain. Then you want to start pulling this piece out, which will form this to fold like that and this will all go in like this. 
So you're now, you've got valleys here, but this is a mountain because you're pulling it out. The last score line you're not actually going to do anything with, you're just going to leave it and then just fold it right across. And just reburnish all your score lines. And there you have that, that centre Z fold pop out piece. Okay, and then that will obviously be going on here, right in the middle, and you can see straight away how it comes together. So now you just want to start doing your mats and your layers. So I've got these three, because I'm going to have one there, one there, and then one on the back, and then that one I'm going to have where I write something, so I'll be able to stamp something on there at a later date. So those are going to stick there. I'm not putting anything on there because this is going to cover it. Okay, if you don't have something big like this and you just want to cover, um, you know, like so, you might put a nice little sentiment here or something. This piece here for the the green, so so the mats, that's two and a quarter by one and three quarters, and then the pattern paper is two by one and a half. You would need two pieces of them. I'm only going to have the one because that's going to go there, and then this one's going to go on this side piece here. Okay, so that's those, and then you want four pieces because these are going to go here one, two, three, four, and these are all one and three quarters. Of oh, no, sorry. So the green is two and a quarter squared, and then the pattern paper is two inches squared. That's right, because these are two and a half inch squared squares. So you can see where they all stick there. So I'm going to go and get all those mats and layers that are stuck down. Okay, next I want to stick this down. Now, that's the reason why my envelope is bigger, because this overhangs, because whatever you have central here is going to overhang. So if you do just want to keep this within a 5 by 7 envelope, then you just want to stay within that section there. And, I mean, I could have that like this, but then you see that side there, and then it opens up like that, okay? So if you would prefer to have it that way, you can do. So what I would do is do a mat and your layer on there, just so you don't have that kind of white bit. But you can certainly have that just in the centre, but I do like to have it like that. I just think it looks a little bit different. So I'm going to have that stuck there. Now I'm going to use some foam just because, I don't know, I quite liked it lifted up a bit more. So I'm putting the foam actually on here. And then once that sticks down, so I'm lining up my points of this within this section here. So I'm going to have it think about there. I want to make sure I also come in within that one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's fine. So stick that down. And then to just secure this in, I'm just going to pop a couple on the back of this. That way it just stops that bit bending because we scored all the way down. So now that just stays within that right angle. It can't go anywhere else. Then I've got these little flowers here. Oh, that's all come out everywhere. So I'm going to pop one about there, and then another one there. And then I've got my best wishes, and the way I've done this is that when this closes down, I had it so that it kind of, again, sat perfectly, you know, with that there underneath. So it should just line up anyway, because I've sort of lined everything else up okay. So. This should sit in the centre there. Um, I don't. I'm not going to give the measurements for this because not everybody's going to have this at all. You can see there. I've just stamped it and then cut really close to it and then just done a little frame with the gold mirrored cardstock. So let's just pop that down over there. Yeah, perfect, like so. And then I've got a couple more little embellishments that I'm going to just pop along here. Add a little bit of more sparkle and there you have it I think it looks really nice it's just such a quick card I know I've done obviously a lot of that off the the camera but it really honestly didn't take any time at all just those mats and layers are so quick and even the flower doesn't take long to die cut at all so there you have it so happy world card making day I hope you manage to find some time today to make some cards or even just this weekend to get in your craft room or your craft space and just create something really nice so I hope this has inspired you please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more thanks for watching bye